I felt like there was something taking over my being without my consent. Feeling like I don't have uh, autonomy over my own flesh and blood. And if I did nothing just from sheer overwhelming, like not being able to do anything else, whether that was because of a resource, because of an insurance thing, because of a, a support system thing, I don't think I would have made it. Hi, I'm Stephanie Ann Midwood. I go by Stan, it's my, my preferred names. Um, I use they, them pronouns. I grew up in a tiny town called Columbia, Connecticut. Um, my mother's house is in Columbia and my father's house is in Willimantic. I moved down to Crucis in uh, February of 2015 for the job, for the job at the library as the young adult department um, librarian. I definitely would tell people, don't call me miss, don't call me ma'am. When I started asking for my preferred name and my preferred uh, pronouns, I had somebody pass me a note that said, um, there are only two genders. That person got sensitivity training. I got canned. 2017, um, the person that I was with at the time, I mean, we had been together long enough to know that like, we probably weren't gonna stay together. An accident happened and I knew right away something was wrong and I, I mean, what do you do? So I was in between paychecks and I, all, the, all of the um, pregnancy tests that I was getting at CVS kept coming up like, inconclusive because it was so early. I knew without knowing. I just knew it was not something my body was supposed to do and I knew it was something that mentally I was not going to do. I, I didn't sleep, I was not eating well, and it was more just like a slowly building panic attack. If I wasn't actively doing something to advance solving my problem, I was just sitting there like shaking. I'm not a stranger to like, suicidal ideation. I'm not a stranger to like the, the really dark thoughts that come, you know, in the middle of the night when there isn't anyone on the phone. The problem was finding an actual abortion provider in this region. Because there's nobody in Southern or Southwestern New Mexico. There's Albuquerque is 250 miles. Every step of the way, everyone was like, so invasive. So I think as a trans person too, it, it starts to feel really dysphoric because the pregnancy, that's, you know, it's obviously seen as a very female problem. There was a gate like closer to the building and they check you for everything, make sure you are who you say you are. Not knowing that this whole process was gonna be so like policed, M mil militant. We went over all of the medications, take one in, hospital or in care like in front of everybody and then the second one you take when you're home and like ready to like be by yourself once i had that experience that was when i realized i had more agency i could start asking for what i did want from the physician i'd been seeking a hysterectomy um since i was about 15 or 16. so i actually ended up being able to use that like experience with some of these doctors to say like, no, really, like this is not gonna happen for me. And this is what I'm willing to do if this ever happens again. We're already challenged on what we believe about our bodies. We're already asked to prove our transness or, or be trans enough, but not too much. We should be trusted, A, to know what we do and don't want in our bodies, or B, like to be trusted to know when we've made a mistake. Post hysterectomy, like I have my entire, I, have, I can now dream. And so my home is in my breath. My home is in my heart. Remembering that something else is holding you besides your own like sheer force of will. 